JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFT's Daily Market Review for August 11th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFT, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded mixed against the other G10 currencies on, against the other, excuse me, major currencies on Tuesday and during the Asian session uh, Wednesday. It gained versus the yen, the Swiss franc, the euro and the pound in that order, while it underperformed against the kiwi, the Canadian dollar and the Aussie. Now, the strengthening of the risk-linked Aussie, kiwi and Luni combined with the weakening of the safe havens, yen and franc, suggests that markets traded in a risk-on fashion yesterday and today in Asia. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that major EU indices were a sea of green with the upbeat appetite rolling into the US session. Both the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 edged um, to fresh record uh, highs. However, Nasdaq was the one to lose some ground. Today in Asia, the picture was more mixed. Japan's uh, Nikkei 225 and China's Shanghai Composite gained, while Hong Kong's Hang Seng and South Korea's KOSPI slid. Now, with no clear catalyst uh, behind the advance in European equities, we suspect that it could be what we've said yesterday. With speculation around an earlier action by the Fed, investors may have rushed into equities in order to take advantage of the low interest rate environment for as long as they can. In the US, market participants also decided to increase their risk uh, exposure, perhaps also due to the US Senate, uh, perhaps also due to the US Senate passing a $1 trillion infrastructure bill with 19 Republicans getting on board. The bill which uh, will now head to the House of Representatives could be the nation's biggest investment of its uh, own kind in uh, decades. Immediately, Immediately after uh, the voting in Senate, uh, the Senate kicked off a debate on a $3.5 trillion package on climate change, universal uh, preschool and affordable housing. However, the optimism cooled during uh, the Asian session today, perhaps due to more concerns about the impact of the coronavirus on several uh, Asian economies where vaccination rates are lower. Back to monetary policy and the Fed, market participants continue to add to bets that the committee will soon have to start scaling back its, its asset purchases, perhaps as soon as next month. According to the Fed Fund Futures, they also brought forth the timing of when they expect interest rates to start rising. Yesterday morning, they've been anticipating this to happen in March 2023. Now they are almost fully pricing uh, in the first hike to be delivered in February 2023. So with that in mind, we will pay extra attention to today's US CPIs for July as they can well impact those uh, expectations. The headline rate is forecast to have ticked down to 5.3% year over year from 5.4% 5 .4, 5 while the core one is forecast to slid to 4.3% from 4.5%. Nonetheless, we don't believe that uh, such a small decline will be enough to hurt expectations with regards to the Fed's uh, future course of action. Inflation would still be well above the Fed's objective of 2%, and with underlying uh, pressures uh, still elevated, many market participants Many market participants could stay convinced that this is unlikely to prove to be transitory and that the Fed should act as soon as possible. With that in mind, if the CPIs solidify the case for a, ta for a tapering start in uh, September, market participants, uh, market participants may then start speculating on the pace of the normalization uh, process. 
Currently, the Fed is buying $120 billion worth of assets uh, per month. So a $20 billion taper means that the program will end in six months and thereby allow even earlier rate hikes while withdrawing only half of that amount would take a full year. We may get more information on that front at the Jackson Hole Economic Symposium scheduled uh, later uh, this uh, month. Now, as for, as for the rest of today's events, uh, we don't have any other top tier data on the agenda, but we do have two Fed officials speaking after uh, the CPIs, and those are Atlanta President Rafael Bostic and Kansas City President Sir George. We already know that Bostic supports uh, beginning the Tabor process soon, therefore most of the attention is likely to follow on George's view. If she also, if she is also in favor of an early action, the U.S. dollar is likely to extend any is likely to extend any potential inflation-related gains. As for tonight, during the Asian session Thursday, Australia's wage uh, price index for the second quarter is coming out, and the forecast points uh, to a slowdown to 1.4 percent year over year from 1.5 percent. During the early European morning Thursday, the main event is likely to be UK's preliminary GDP for the second quarter, with the forecast pointing to a rebound of 4.8% quarter over quarter from minus 1.6%, something that could take the year over year rate up to 22.1% from minus 6.1%. Industrial production for June is also coming out, and expectations are for a slowdown to 0.3% month over month from 0.8% month over month. At last week's gathering, the Bank of England lowered the threshold of when they will start uh, reducing their stock uh, of bonds. Specifically, they said that they will do so when the policy rate hits uh, 0.50% by not uh, reinvesting the proceeds of maturing debt. The previous guidance was for the bank uh, to not start unwinding its bond purchases until interest rates were near 1.5%. For some participants, this could mean that quantitative, quantitative easing tapering may start earlier than previously anticipated, and a strong GDP print could add credence to that view. The British pound is likely to receive some support, but we prefer to avoid exploiting any gains against uh, currencies, the central bank of which uh, are also uh, the central banks of which are also expected to start normalizing their policies soon. For example, we would see decent chances for an uptrend uh, continuation in GBP Aussie. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.